Hello? Are we on? Oh! Hi! Hey everybody, this is Mr. Avant, and I'm going to do my third video lesson, and I hope everyone is doing well. I've been spending lots of time with my daughter, hanging out with her and doing schoolwork with her. I hope you and your family are safe and well. Um, if you don't know, the uh, coronavirus seems to be um, escalating. There are more cases being discovered. As they roll out more tests for people and it's easier to get a test, we're going to discover more people have had it or have it. And we're going to have to stay indoors a lot more for the next couple of weeks. So hang in there. Things will get better, I promise. And you'll have a summer and another school year to look forward to. Okay, today we are going to skip Lesson 19 in Module 5. Lesson 19 deals with some word problems. I want to get back to word problems at some point, and I want y'all to practice solving word problems with fractions. But for now, we're going to move ahead to Lesson 20, 21, and 22, which you should already be familiar with because we tried adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators at one point. So, so far we've been dealing with denominators with the same number. Uh, then we started separating them saying, okay, this is how you find a common denominator in order to add and subtract. Today we're going to practice that. Um, it'll start off with some easy fractions like one half times uh, four eighths. That's one half plus one half. Easy to find a common denominator there. But then we're going to move on to, um, you know, different fractions like with thirds and fourths and sixths and ninths. And then we're going to start adding whole numbers times a fraction. And, you know, hang in there, you'll get the hang of it. It'll be easy once you get the gist of how to find those common denominators. So uh, stay tuned for my lesson at the whiteboard. See you soon. Bye. Okay, here we are again, and we are looking at our whiteboard. We're uh, going to look today at finding common denominators with LCM, lowest common multiple, then add. But we've been over this before, and lesson 20 and 21, we are not actually looking for the least common multiple because these fractions share a common factor. So let's look at these real quick. We have lesson 20. Page 106, this is problem 2C in the problem set, and it's 6 tenths plus 1 half. Now, we don't need to find a common multiple here because 10 is a multiple of 2. Remember, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So, what we have to do here is actually ask the question, what do I multiply times the bottom number or the denominator and the top to make the bottom 10. Okay, that's a simple question to ask. And then if we look at problem 109, I mean page 109, problem 2b problem set for lesson 21, this is an addition of two fractions with different denominators that are actually going to equal a mixed number that's greater than one. So lesson 20, they do not go over 1. We look at the number line. And then in Lesson 21, they start going over 1. And in Lesson 22, we actually get to some bigger numbers. But um, these, like I said, this one stays under 1. This one goes over 1. Also, they're going to ask you on these two problem sets to make a model of it using the number line. So that's what we're going to go over on the whiteboard. All right, let me get my blue marker. And let's look at 2C here. It says 6 tenths plus 1 half. You can see I've made a number line from 0 to 1, and I'm showing 1 half. And I need to ask the question, what do I add, I mean, what do I multiply 
times one half, since that is the one that's different, to give me a denominator, a denominator that is greater or equal, I'm sorry, equal to 10. What do we multiply top and bottom to give me a 10 on the bottom? That should be easy, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's the fifth multiple. That means we multiply 5 over 5. All right, let's do that. I'm going to erase this and rewrite it again like this. 6 tenths plus whatever we get here. All right, so we multiply across, multiply across. Remember that song? 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. All right, so now what we're saying is, what is 6 tenths plus 5 tenths? Well, wait a minute. This is actually bigger than one whole number. So I need to change my model over here a little bit. This is going to extend out a little bit. And I think it's going to end up over there. So let's look at our number line and get these numbers straight. Um, let's use purple. Okay, what do these hash marks mean? Well, we have 0, 1 half, and 1. We are saying here that 1 half is 5 tenths. So I'm going to rewrite that here, 5 tenths. 1 half is equal to 5 tenths. That means 6 tenths is right here. Okay, so that's 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths. And this is 6 tenths. Okay, it's saying that I need to go 5 tenths more, so I'm going to count. I'm going to write 5 tenths here. Plus. Alright, we go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, that is showing me that I'm over 1 by 1 tenth more. So what is that going to equal? Well, we just come back over here and add 6 plus 5 is 11 over 10. I need to write my answer as a mixed number. Let me look at my mixed number here. I have 1 plus 1 more tenth. So that equals 1 and 1 tenth or 11 tenths. Okay? Almost messed up there. I'll say 11 tenths equals 1 and 1 tenth. Alright, let's look down here at page 109, problem 2B, problem set. This time we have 1 half plus 6 eighths. Again, I really don't need to find the lowest common multiple here because I can see that 8 is a multiple of 2 already. And what I probably need to do is make 1 half into 8. So let's rewrite this. What do I multiply times, top and bottom, times 1 half to give me 8 on the bottom? Right. Let's go over here and look at our number line. I can see that I've already set it up over 1. I got 0, 1, and then the fractions keep going past 1. And then I said 1 half is right here. That is also equal to 2 fourths. So here are the fourths. So in between, we have the 8. Okay. So, 1 eighth, 1 fourth is also 2 eighths, and 3 eighths, 1 half is 4 eighths, 5 eighths, so on and so forth. They just keep going that way. Let's come back over here and figure this out. What do I multiply times 2 to get 8 on the bottom? I have to do the same thing to the top. Let's do our multiples of 2. 2, 4, 6, 8. That is the fourth multiple. That means 2 times 4 is 8, so I multiply 4 top and bottom. I'm going to rewrite it with our new fraction. Multiply across, multiply across. 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. So 1 half is equal to 4 eighths, and I can see that right here, right? 1 half is 4 eighths, and we're adding 6 eighths more. Okay? Now let's go back to our number line. 
let's find 4 eighths. Here it is right here. And they want us to add 6 eighths more. So let's start. Let me get a different color. 6 eighths more, I'm going to use red. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There is 6 eighths more. Where do we end up? It says we end up on 5 fourths on my number line, but let's figure out where the 8s are. Let me get green again. So at 1 whole number, we should be at 8 over 8. Okay? That makes this one 9 8, and then the second 8 after 1 is 10 8. So that is 1 plus 1, 2, 8. So let's rewrite this as 4 plus 6 is 10 over 8. As a mixed number, it's 1 and then 1, 2, 8 more. 1 and 2, 8. That's all you got to do. Stay tuned for the next video. Okay, here we are for lesson 22. Take a look here. Lesson 22, like I said, we're starting to use whole numbers and fractions. Let me close the door here. My daughter is watching a show about fairies and elves. Okay, so here it is. Adding and subtracting fractions with a whole number. So here on page 113, 1B, we have four whole numbers and we want to add three quarters more. And then down there at 3B on the same page, we are trying to subtract two-thirds away from five whole numbers. What we have to pay attention to here. Now, the first part up here says to use a tape diagram. Down at the bottom, it says use a number line. But what we got to pay attention to here is what is the denominator we're working with. If we look at this problem, all we have to do is look at the fraction that we're adding, and it says fourths. So we're dealing with fourths. Well, let's talk about that then. So if we're dealing with fours here, I need to change four. I need to break it apart. I need to decompose it into fours. So what is four as fours? Well, we could say that it, we could call it 12 fours. But what we want to do is separate things so that we know what we're looking at. Okay. So four can also be represented as... 3 and 4 fourths, right? 3 plus 1 whole number, 3 plus 1 whole number is equal to 3 fourths. That's one way of looking at it. Or, let me erase that. That is something we're going to do when we subtract. Or, we could simply go to our tape diagram and represent 3 fourths more. So let's look at this here. I'm going to say that, let's see here, let's call this, now remember you can make tape diagrams and number lines represent anything you want. Let's call this four whole numbers here and say that this is four and that each one of these is a fourth. Okay, so here's four. And then this is going to equal one whole number here. And then this is broken into fours. So that's four, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. So this is real simple. That's why in lesson 22, they don't focus too much on addition. They want to start focusing on subtraction. So let's finish this up. That is simply four and three fourths. You're just basically representing a mixed number here by adding this smaller fraction to a whole number. Four and three fourths is your answer, very simply. And we can represent it this way on the number, on this tape diagram here. So that would be three fourths right there, okay? All right, let's move to the more important problem down here. Five minus two thirds. Okay, what is essential here is that we have a fraction that we can take two thirds away from. All right, on the number line, here's what I did. I gave you three whole numbers, which also equals nine thirds. Four whole numbers, four times three is 12, so that's 12 over three. 
And then five whole numbers, that is five times three, that's 15 over three. Look at how these also represent division as well. What we need to do is we gotta break down this five. So we have a whole number and a fraction for two thirds to be subtracted from. Remember the fraction has gotta be big enough to pull two thirds away from it. Uh, otherwise, you don't have anything to pull away from it. Um, this is something you're gonna have to do. You have to get used to this. You need to break this number apart. And when we're adding and subtracting uh, fractions or mixed numbers, you can do the whole numbers first and then the fractions last and then put them together and simplify. So let's do that. Take five. I can pull five apart into four plus one or four plus three thirds. Remember we're dealing in thirds here. Three thirds is one whole number. So that is four plus three thirds. I can take this four and it can sit on the side over here for a minute. Now I want to look at this. Two thirds minus three thirds. The four is fine. I can pull this two thirds from three thirds and have a result. So let's simplify that. Two thirds minus three thirds is two minus three. That is simply one third. I bring the four back and our answer is four and one third. Let's look at that action over here on the number line. So again, we started with five and we want to pull two thirds off. Okay, so we started five. There's one third and two thirds. So that's minus two thirds. Where does it end up? Let's look at your number line. We have four and one third. That's where it lands up right there. So it starts here at five and then they want us to, to subtract two thirds. Five and then two thirds back is four and one third. So we did it with math by breaking the five apart and we also represented it on a number line. Okay, I'm going to go to the problem set in the Eureka book and I'm going to do a couple of these with you to wrap all this stuff up and I need you to practice. Okay, here we are. We're at our module book. We are looking at lesson 20 problem set, page 105. And let's look at the first one real quick. This was the first example. Very simple example, 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. Remember, we gotta get the bottom numbers the same. And on this one, they want to show a tape diagram as well. So since uh, 1A is already drawn for us, let's go ahead and finish that. As you can see, they've figured out that the factor or the common factor here is 8 on the bottom. 8, 8, right there. 8, 8, 8, okay? So we say 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. Well, we have a model here that shows us that we have force in one hole okay so that's one hole in force and then they put a little dotted line to show you that it can be broken up into eight so one fourth can also be written as two eighths all right and then it says we have to add an eighth more which gets us right here. We have to shade this in. All right. So one eighth plus one eighth more. Let's do this. Two eighths plus one eighth more equals three eighths. Let's also show that um, we can multiply to get eight on the bottom too. One fourth times a factor of two, top and bottom, equals two eighths plus one eighth equals three eighths. That's how I really want y'all to start looking at things. Why don't I don't always make my eights like that? Okay. Let's um, let's go to the bottom to F. All right, does everyone see F? Let's rewrite it. 
it says two thirds plus two ninths equals what? Now, of course, they want the uh, the tape model, and we can do that. Remember, these fractions are going to be mostly less than one. So I'm drawing a model of thirds. Okay, and we have. Let me get a pencil. We have two thirds. There's two thirds. But now we see we need to, in order to add these two fractions, we need to show it in ninths. So in order to get ninths, what do I need to multiply three times? Well, I need to multiply by three in the model. So I break each third into three pieces that gives me a total of nine parts now. So we started off with two thirds here. Now we actually have, I'm sorry, we have six ninths if you count the parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then they said they want us wanted us to add two more so there's one ninth and two ninths so two ninths plus six ninths is seven eight almost one whole let me show you these in all right let's show that as multiplication so if we started off with two thirds, we need to get those bottom numbers the same. So I multiply times a factor of three, top and bottom, and I get six ninths, six ninths. Let me do it up here, six ninths plus two ninths equals eight ninths. Eight, eight. No mixed numbers here because it is less than one whole number. All right, that's easy. Let's move over to lesson 21. And let's look at let's look at D. Does everyone see D? This is page. 109 problem set 21 and we're looking at D okay this is going to give us something bigger than one whole number so first of all I like to rewrite it because the fractions are too teeny weeny in Eureka all right in this exercise they said they wanted us to draw a tape diagram to represent each add-in so they want us to represent four fifths and seven tenths decompose one of the tape diagrams to make like units then write a complete number sentence use a number bond to write each sum as a mixed number so a lot going on there let's do the tape diagram for four fifths so i'm going to draw tape diagram remember we're trying to get our denominators the same so let's show fifths by drawing four lines one two three four I'll go ahead and shade them in All right I use my dotted line to turn it into tenths or basically multiplying times two all right now let's see what we get so four fifths i'm going to write it up here is actually equal to how many tenths let's count the parts one two three four five six seven eight that makes sense right because four fifths times a factor of two over two equals eight tenths that's what I want us to focus on right here all right then it says it wants us to show another tape model for the add-in the add-in is simply 
what we call the other thing we're adding. This time I need to show it in tenths since it's already in tenths. Two, three, four. So I'm going to start by drawing fifths and then divide each fifth in half to create tenths. And then I shade in seven. right there okay there's my seven tenths now if we add these tenths plus these tenths what do we get so if I add eight plus seven I get 15 over 10 now they want a number bond to show a mixed number so I circle this and I need to show how many 10 10 so or how many whole numbers can I get out of it well I can get 10 out of 10 that equals one whole number how many are left over how many more makes uh, 15 5 tenths therefore my answer is 1 and five tenths all right really simple okay the rest of um 21 is all about adding and getting those mixed numbers remember your answer should be a mixed number all right let's move on to 22 real quick because these videos are getting really long and what i want to do here is i'm going to see if i can find a more difficult problem let's go to page 114 this is problem set 22 page 114 and we're looking at D All right the instruction says complete subtraction sentences by using number bonds so what we're going to do again remember we're going to write it bigger 7 minus 3 ninths equals remember what we're trying to do here is pull a fraction out of seven in ninths so that we can subtract three ninths from it so I can break seven apart into one well I need to pull one whole number away from seven and that is represented by nine over nine okay there's my whole number and if I'm pulling one away from seven that gives me six Okay, so seven can be represented in ninths as six in nine ninths. Now, we're going to subtract three ninths from it. Okay, now we're just going to focus on this part of the problem. I want you all to start keeping this in mind. When you are subtracting mixed numbers, you can do the whole numbers first and adding. Do the whole numbers first, then do the fractions then simplify so in this case the six is going off to the side for a second while we subtract three ninths from six ninths when that happens when I subtract three ninths from nine ninths I get six ninths All right and then I want to bring my six back and I'm going to put my answer back up here. 6 plus 6 ninths is 6 and 6 ninths. Okay? That's all there is to it. Now when we come back, um, we're going to do the next lesson, 23. In 23, what we're going to start doing, 23, 24, 25, we are going to go back to comparisons. And let's see, I think we're going to come back to comparisons. Oh no, here's what we're going to do. In 23, 24, and 25, we are going to start converting mixed numbers to improper fractions and improper fractions back to mixed numbers. So see you again next week. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.